Conversation on Friday. Oh, I don't even know. April 24th. You pick a date. That's kind of where we're at right now. Good to see you. Good to be with you. Uh, you know, amazing things are uh, are happening in the world, and you are one of them. Uh, since you are one of them, we are going to talk about every single way uh, today that we each have a story of the road that we're on. So. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Uh, I'm Greg Wasinski. Good to be with you. Um, good to have all my friends back. I'm just looking looking around at everybody here this morning. Good morning, John and Tina, Ted, Ray, Marilyn. Man, it's good to be with you all. Um, so yeah, the uh, the amazing part about uh, about the journey that we're on is that we all have a story to tell, and so that's what I want to talk about today on uh, Coffee and Conversation. What is it the story that we have to tell? How are we going to be the ones that uh, can inspire others through the story that we tell? So good morning, little toast to you, uh, to everybody around the, the uh, I guess the world. I mean, you never know who's here. Let me fix one thing while I'm at it. I can see that my audio is, uh, is down, but we're going to fix that. So every time, you ever heard the old adage that every time you fix something, you break something else? Uh, well, that's kind of what we're doing here. 
Check one, two. All right. So here we go. Um, there we go. I think we're back. So I keep implementing new things to our uh, software program, and I think that I've pushed it to limit at some point, so now I need to pull back a little bit. But um, yeah, so storytelling. Th that's really what I want to talk about today. Uh, you know, each one of us have this story to tell. And some of the stories are great, and some of the stories are hard. But they each have the ability to impact somebody else in a different way. And um, I was just thinking about yesterday's program that, you know, we talked about Mr. Rogers, and we talked about the impact that he has all of these years later, that his story lives on. But in true Mr. Rogers fashion, it wasn't just about his story. It was about everybody's story. Mr. Rogers cared about everybody's story, and that's why it made him who he was. And I think that we sometimes get caught in thinking that either A, we don't want to tell people vulnerable things about ourselves, or B, uh, we don't think that other people would find our story interesting or would want to listen. And the line is, uh, the line is gray, but I can tell you that it's only through telling our story it's only through sharing who we are that we ultimately uh, inspire the world through our actions. So that's my question this morning. Is there a story that you can think of that really inspired you or really helps push you uh, in your life? Something that you can't ever forget that once you heard that story, um, it just drives you to know that, that you were inspired, that, that you can do things that maybe you thought you couldn't do. And, and I'll share one of mine real quick. Um, when I work with young people, I'm always looking for ways that I can help them understand on their level that we aren't just adults trying to tell them about things that they can do or things that they should be. Uh, and we're just an adult telling you what you should do. So. I always look for different ways that I can inspire young people uh, with stories of their peers, stories of other children that, that have done great and amazing things. And one of the stories that really uh, touched my heart early, early on, and I've told this story for, for many years, was the story of Alex Scott. Now, you may not know the name Alex Scott, but you may have heard of Alex's lemonade stands. Right. So Alex's lemonade stands on one day in June, they get together and they raise money uh, for kids with childhood cancer. And the way that Alex's lemonade stands came about was Alex Scott was a, a young girl at eight months old who was diagnosed with a very rare form of blood cancer. And she was put into treatment. Her family had the means to be able to pay for it. And uh, Alex would go to her treatments continuously. And uh, one day, when Alex was four years old, she said to her mom, she said, Mommy, I would like to start a lemonade stand to raise money for other kids who have cancer but can't get the same care that I do. Now, in whatever words the four-year-old said that, or if she said it that way, that was the gist of what she said. Now, if you're like me, a lot of times a kid We'll have an idea that sounds sweet, but we may not follow up on it. But her mom did. And so Alex had that lemonade stand. And in her very first lemonade stand, she raised $2,000. She raised $2,000, and they donated it uh, to cancer um, care for young children who could not afford it. Uh, sadly, Alex died uh, by the age of nine. But... Alex's purpose was fulfilled through God because today Alex's lemonade stands still continue. And every year on a day in June, 2,000 volunteers from across the country get together and they host their lemonade stands and they have raised millions of dollars for young children who can't afford cancer care. Now, this all came about 
because a four-year-old girl didn't say, why me? Um, she didn't say, you know, uh, I wish I could go play like the other kids. Those weren't her sentiments. It was she was born to be something special. And her story not only lets young people know that if a young girl prior to the age of nine can go out and do good for the world in a major capacity, that so can we, but it should inspire everybody that no matter where they are, that whatever your circumstances are, that your story has the ability to inspire other people. So um, this morning, if you're just joining us on Coffee and Conversation today, uh, as we talk about our stories, little mug, uh, that's a scary looking bee, by the way. I, I don't, man, I don't know that I would stay and be friends with that one. Um, but anyway, be grateful is our, is our conversation. Uh, I, my question is, um, just a brief, uh, just a brief mention of maybe even a name or a movie or some story that you have heard about another's life uh, that you found to be special uh, that inspired you. Um, so we all have stories to tell. We think that we're not. Uh, we think that we're not special. We think that we can't inspire other people. And the truth is, is that that's just wrong. Because even the smallest of things, even the smallest of stories about, um, you know, let's just say it's, it's a struggle that you're having in your home with a, a teenage child. Even that mention, to be vulnerable enough when somebody says, how are you, that you really answer that question honestly. Well, everything's really good, except we have this one thing going on. And you don't know if that invite from God is for that person to go, oh my gosh, we went through exactly the same thing. And now you're, by sharing a little bit of your insight, you are opening the door for so many other people to be able to tell their story. Um, you know, or it might be as big as, as something else that is so much bigger than anybody else can handle. Um, there, there's just different ways that each and every, each and every one of us have uh, within us a simple story to tell. And it might even be uh, uh, memories. Um, you know, a uh, couple, couple of stories that just come to mind as I, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, Carolyn just said Stephen Curtis Chapman's family. Um, I actually had a chance to um, be backstage with Stephen uh, one day for an event. And, you know, to this day, in 10 years of working with large mainstream Christian bands, my talk with uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman and, and Bart from Mercy Me uh, were two of my favorites, just because we were real fathers talking about real things. And one of the things that I told Stephen um, during our backstage talk was that I just wanted him to know that his story didn't happen for no reason. That what they had experienced as a family and the loss of their daughter, that that story did not happen. And if you haven't read Mary Beth Chapman's uh, book, Choosing to See, uh, and you've experienced any kind of great loss in your life or you know somebody that is, Choosing to See is an amazing book by Mary Beth Chapman. Uh, but yeah, it's it's um, it's powerful. It's strong, um, you know. And, and not every story is is as earth shattering uh, as that. You know, for me, one of the one of the stories that I I, I think about going back years ago uh, is the people that um, the old ladies. Let's just call it what it is. It was the old ladies in my church that would sit in the dark church for hours praying the rosary or praying different prayers. And I grew up in a large cathedral-style church, so they were kind of spread out all over the place. Maybe they were getting ready for the whole coronavirus thing. I don't know. But they're spread out all over the place, and we call them the church ladies, right? And as kids, we would see them... Uh, I don't know that we were afraid of them, but we just kind of ignored them. And a couple of years ago at Mass, uh, 
I'm sitting uh, at a First Friday service at uh, St. Paul the Conversion uh, sh uh, Church, Shrine downtown on 40th and Euclid, and they begin to read these uh, prayers after Mass is over. And I didn't know what the prayers were, but uh, it's a devotion. It's part of a, a First Friday devotion. And part of the prayer said, um, we pray for the conversion of those who don't believe. And in that moment, it threw me back so hard because I thought, oh my gosh, who was in a church praying for me that during my time away from church, that during the, during the time that uh, I'm being selfish and pushing God aside, who was it that sat in a church and held me by name and prayed for me to come back to God so that he could work in my life in a new way. You know, all these, even that little story, like I've told that story over and over again about how these, these what I would have considered holy rollers sitting in a church, praying the rosary for no reason. Uh, they just had nothing better to do than sit in a church. But that wasn't the truth. They believed in the power of prayer and what God can do for those, even those who aren't willing to set foot inside the building. So when we think back, we, we have all these stories. It might even be stories about stories that you read to your kids. You think about the favorite story that you used to read to your children growing up. And maybe it was the funny voices that you had, or uh, maybe it was the way that they held you at night, or no matter what, the, no matter what your story is, um, it can recall some great memories for us, and it can also remind people. So let's just take the, the story of reading a story, for example. To tell a young father or a young mother about the importance of reading to your children and the memories that it creates, you're telling a story that can benefit their life that they may think about every time they're too tired uh, to read a bedtime story. You're telling a story that helps them become better as parents uh, and makes them think about who they might want to be or grow into uh, if they look up to you in a different way. So many stories. E every day we're telling stories. And so my question, follow-up uh, to that is, you know, many of you have talked about, um, and they, they kind of scrolled so I can't see all of them, but... Um, you know, there's these stories about people that inspire you and, and people that, um, I'm just looking at, let me see if I can go back a little bit. Um, St. John Paul II and the Beggar. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, yeah, just scroll through the comments uh, if, if you can see them. Um, there's some great stories in there. Helen Keller, yeah, she uh, she is an amazing woman. That, you know, and if you haven't had one in a while, go up and go and look at one. Um, the uh, the other story that let me give you another one that's amazing. If you need some major inspiration, is uh, look up Team Hoyt. Uh, Team Hoyt is about the father uh, and son, the son who was born with cerebral palsy and wanted to do a marathon. Uh, so the father decided to run the marathon with him in the wheelchair. And then over the years, I, don't, I think they may have just done their last one in the last year or two, uh, but they have done triathlons together where he carries his son on his back the entire triathlon. I mean, cr an crazy, uh, amazing story of perseverance and making the best uh, out of anything. And I'm sure that, you know, we could go on and, and talk about for hours all these stories. But today I, I want you to really look at some of these stories and I want you to think about what is inside you. And I want you to think about the story that you can tell. I want you to think about the story that you have that can change the life of somebody else. Now that doesn't mean that you need to go <laughs> with a megaphone on the corner today and, and uh, start screaming your story, uh, but 
I want you to think about people that, it might be people that are in your life right now, that's an easy place to start because it would be the most comfortable, um, or people that you've heard of. And then there's just the general awareness of strangers, that if we are able to tell our story in some way that helps somebody else, then if it was suffering, then we didn't suffer in vain. We suffered with purpose. If it is joy, then we're sharing a joy to lift somebody up who can work to experience the same thing uh, that we once did. I mean, I had so many business mentors growing up that in my life and business before ministry, there are so many people that took this chance on me, but I watched everything that they did when they were successful. And as I became more mature, I was able to pick out the parts that I liked and the things that I didn't like. Because I, I kind of absorbed all of it, but I realized not all of it was good, so I began to pick out the things that I liked. Um, but lots of stories to tell, from healthcare to jobs to whatever. Uh, but there's an opportunity for you to share your story today. There's an opportunity for you to inspire somebody else. Uh, and if you're just joining us on Coffee and Conversation, peace be with you. Good morning. Um, but we're talking about telling our story. And so I want each and every person today watching to just think about who else is my story meant for? Who else is my story meant to share a message of hope or perseverance or grace? It doesn't have to be a celebrity that changes the world. It doesn't have to be somebody who has an audience of thousands of viewers. And it certainly doesn't need to just be me who is blessed with the message to share. But it's only to open the doorway so that you all can go out into the world and do your part. Because together, we change many more lives than I ever could just talking to my red light on the computer. So let's be bold to tell our stories. Think about what you have to share. Think about what you've been through. And think about who might need to hear your story today uh, in order to become better, uh, to be more inspired, or uh, to grow. So, um, yeah, Susie, uh, I'm trying to be. And one day when I write my life story, uh, it might horrify people. <laughs> so... Yeah, um, John Jessica uh, Robin Alt, uh an amazing story, uh, as well as her daughter Lilia. Uh, uh, family is very close and dear, and, and uh, their tragic passing uh, in Florida a few years back during a drag racing incident uh, certainly um, not only deeply hurt the, the family, uh, destroyed the family, but many around them. So, um, so many stories to look up. Um, and we will, uh, we will continue to be in this together and to grow together. And so, yes, let's take our stories today. Let's uh, lift them up and let's pray for those who don't have the strength to uh, convert or the strength for those people who uh, have been afraid to listen but now are ready. So uh, let's end our time together in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, you've given us each a story to tell to be a witness to the rest of the world. Uh, whether it is to convert others to know you and, and to grow closer to you, or to simply be a messenger of hope uh, through our own perseverance, that it continues to help people be on a journey and grow uh, in closer appreciation for what they have. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon all of us. We ask for your grace for those who are suffering. And we also ask for all those who will go without food and shelter this day, Lord, to be fed spiritually and to find the people in their life that can help them be fed physically and spiritually as well. Lord, we also pray for the conversion of all those who need to know your love this day. And we pray together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Real quick, uh, at the end, thank you for that prayer before we end with coffee and conversation. A um, couple things. No coffee conversation on Saturday, but it will be on Sunday, Sunday 9 a.m. Sunday 9 a.m., we're going to take it to church a little bit and uh, go through the scriptures for Sunday. Uh, so join us at 9 a.m. for coffee and conversation. And on Monday, uh, my friend, who you heard her song this road at the beginning, Carrie Ann Ford, is going to be joining me via Zoom on Monday uh, from New York. And uh, we have a special announcement that we're going to announce on Monday morning. Uh, so be sure to tune in at 7.30 on Monday morning for that. But we'll see you at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So much to be thankful for. God bless you. God keep you. Share your stories. And may everybody that you come in contact with today uh, know that they are blessed and better off because they met you. Take care.